everybody today on inside craft show it's dawson it's all about i'm just kidding today on inside craft show we're going to talk about hlg so today that's what i'm going to show you i'm going to show you how to set up the venture resolve to be able to trigger hlg on youtube uh, and if you've watched this show you know we have moved multiple times today we've now moved into our new office which is a little dim let's turn on the overhead pardon the light so now we have our new office which is my old office back into it it's a wreck jeff's here now too and there's dawson's corner get in your corner dawson go i need my chair you don't need a chair just stand there just stand there blair witch style Okay, so today on Inside Craft Show, one of the things that we want to talk about is HLG HDR. If you're using a GH5 uh, at some point, whether now or in the future or whenever, or this is recorded in the past, you're gonna end up with an option to use HLG and we kinda wanted to talk about what that means in terms of HDR. There are three primary flavors of HDR, which stands for High Dynamic Range. I should have done it this way. Uh, probably won't put a graphic in because I'm lazy. The cool part about it is, Dolby Vision is the big boy one. That's the big standard, requires a special license, and it's a whole big thing not even to worry about right now because 99% of us aren't gonna touch it. That said, HDR10 and HLG are both available to us now, as a matter of fact. You can actually start working in HLG, kinda, and HDR10, absolutely. You can, you can work in those spaces now, and Jeff is going to show us a video on that. All right, everybody, so this is the footage that I shot when I went to go pick my wife up in DC. So all this was shot in HLG, and it's all colored for HLG color space and to trigger on the YouTube as an HLG file. So today, that's what I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how to set up DaVinci Resolve to be able to trigger HLG on YouTube. Uh, it's the one way that we know for a fact absolutely worked. Uh, we've tried many different versions of HLG and how to get it to render out. Uh, talk to YouTube and this is the the one that triggered every single time for us So what we have to do is you have to use DaVinci Resolve uh, I use DaVinci Resolve 12.5 because I don't use betas when they're still in beta forms Once DaVinci 14 comes out as DaVinci 14 non-beta I will switch over and then I will start exploring DaVinci 14 So the two big things that you have to do you have to set up your scopes right and you have to set up your color space right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into DaVinci Resolve here and to set up your color space right, you have to do, you have to go into your project settings and you have to change your settings around. Mystery Box did a great job of showing starting points on how to get this done. I followed Mystery Box first to get through this and then it was trial and error to actually get it to work for us. So down the bottom right corner, you go to settings. I shot everything at UHD. Actually, I shot it at 4K, but for this project, I'm changing it to UHD, so it's gonna be Ultra UHD. I'm gonna change my video format out for my reference monitor to be the exact same thing. Change my timeline to 23976, because that's where I was. Now your color science, this is the important one. You change your color science to YRGB Color Manage. You have to go to Color Manage so that when you go to Color Management page in just a minute, you can change your timeline and your output space. So at the bottom, you also have to click the Enabled HDR Metadata over HDMI. That will send the HDR file or form out to your reference monitor. If We'll have to go into the HDR monitor. Uh, so next you go to Color and then you go to Enable HDR Scopes at ST2084. Um, this is going to enable your scopes to read the full thousand nits that you are going to need to be able to color grade with this. Uh, so you go to color management. This is where color managed means a lot because now timeline color space, you can go in, you go to Rec 2020 HLG ARIB standard B67. You change your output color space to the exact same. This is the original HLG file format, the color space and the metadata triggers for HLG. After that, you switch your HDR mastering to 1000 nits so that that is where your top white level is going to be mastered to, and then you go to save. And this is how you set up the beginning project color space wise. Now in DaVinci, you also have um, other HLG spaces inside of Rec 2020. Uh, there is an HLG, an HLG scene, 
and then the B67. Uh, the HLG and the HLG scene would not trigger for us on YouTube, so that's why we're going with the B67, which is just an old tried and true standard for HLG. Um, but here's the rest of that footage, and yeah, I think we're done, because it just restarted. Let's talk about the difference between HLG and HDR10. There will be a battle coming soon between two different camps that are going to argue that HLG is better than HDR10. I've already seen it a little bit. There are major differences between the two. There are major similarities between the two. And at the end of the day, this is a very important phrase I'm about to give you. It's going to come down to creative intent or artistic intent or filmmaker intent or whatever. HLG was developed by the BBC and a company in Japan, NHQ or NHK or something, but that's what they're pushing because it is, it is a wonderful standard for broadcast. So it, it, it's a way, HLG is a way to get beautiful high dynamic range images through a broadcast uh, push, right? So they could, networks could broadcast this way. BBC could broadcast this way if you can see the bias. However, it's awesome at the same time. Then let's jump to HDR10. If you've watched anything on Amazon Prime or on Netflix, you will note that, there's the email, you will note that HDR10 is what triggers. If you care to understand it, that's what's going to trigger. YouTube right now is the only platform that supports both HDR10 and HLG upload. So you can put uh, an HLG HDR or an HDR10, which we're gonna start calling PQ, by the way. We're gonna throw PQ into the mix because it's easier. So you have HLG can go to YouTube, PQ can go to, to YouTube, and you can push them out. They both have beautiful looks to them because what they're working off of is this idea that your consumer television is going to cap out around a thousand nits, right? Maybe even, and this is your HDR TV, by the way, maybe even 1500 nits. So a regular television, a 4K, television is still going to live right at 100 nits. That's where it's going to land. But an HDR TV gives you a thousand nits. So you can imagine the top end of your image, your highlights are going to get a lot more range in them, dynamic range in them and, and, and kind of go in that space. One of the questions that's come up a good bit is I bought vlog and now they're giving me HLG. Will it matter? Well, let's talk about that for one second first. So one of the big differences between PQ and HLG, certainly in the capture of this image, is gonna come down to the relative stops of dynamic range that they, they provide. HLG is going to give you roughly, according to the BBC article, 16 stops of dynamic range. HLG gives 16 stops of dynamic range based on its color profile and its uh, color space profile. PQ, however, can give up to 28 stops of dynamic range, which means you get a lot of data back into your highlights, specifically in that space. It's a beast, and that works either way. That is from a log basis, because again, you gotta think about the back-end color space we're talking about. Internal camera, separate issue, back-end color space is what matters in this case because it's the display color space is what we're, what we're really showing with HDR. That's one thing to consider. Uh, finishing an HDR 10 or PQ will give you 28 stops. Most, the human eye, I can't, I don't think it can see past a certain point. To take advantage of both of those bumps, the HLG having 16 and the PQ having 28, you really need to be in 12 bit, which we ain't. So we're in 10 bit. So for us, in our thinking, we wanna maximize that as much as we can. So we're gonna stick with PQ at the moment. Though HLG is rad and super impressive, it is not as implemented yet and not as widespread as say uh, PQ is. So a lot of people can see PQ content, not as many people can see HLG content yet. So how do they work? One of the ways these work is they break down very simply. HLG is scene relative. So it just reads the entire scene and bases its uh, output on that scene itself versus PQ, which is absolute. That means the image that was created in the color bay is exactly what you're going to get. Here's an interesting scenario as an artist, and this is where artistic, creative, filmmaker intent comes into play. You're sitting in a properly calibrated monitor exactly where you want it to be, and I'm talking about true broadcast standard monitors like high-end stuff, but you set the image exactly how you want, and what you see on that PQ 
output is exactly what's going to be displayed as long as the display matches it. HLG, because it's relative, you're gonna grade it in the bay, get it as best you can, and then no matter what happens on anybody else's screen, it's not that it's going to automatically adjust and look perfect on every screen, but it does cheat a little bit because it relatively reads the screen, interprets how it's being interpreted, or it reads how it's being interpreted, I should say, and then shifts the light accordingly. What you end up with, HLG for a broad base uh, broadcast element of those who are gonna target that is going to probably be a little more popular because you don't have to worry about certain things as much. That said, if you really want ultimate control and really have a creative idea that you're after and you really wanna push it through, PQ, because it's absolute, meaning it's what you see is what you get, it is going to end up being, in my opinion, a stronger standard from that way for artistic intent when that matters to you, that's where it's gonna come into play. The flavor of the HDR is one thing because you have two different things. Like I said, you have artistic intent, creative intent versus uh, getting your product out there and letting people see it, your video, sorry, business term, uh, video out there and letting people see it. HLG, like I said, is primarily driven to be a broadcast standard so that the majority of people on the planet can see it. It does not by any means mean it will be perfect, nor does that mean that HDR 10 PQ will be perfect because if someone has really jacked with their monitor, you don't got no control over it, but you don't have that anyway. So if your workflow right now is to work off something like a Flanders or a professional grading monitor and you really want it to look exactly, you spend a ton of time in the color bay and you have very specific reasons for these highlights to, to stay maintained, you might want to look at HDR10. But if you just want to get general content out that is an HDR that looks fantastic, by the way, then HLG might work for you in that space. So there's not a wrong answer to either one. You've got to think about the end user. That's the biggest component of this. It's not about you, it's about the end user. You want to make sure the end user sees it exactly how you want, that's one thing. If you just want the end user to enjoy HDR content, that's another thing. My phone's blowing up. Sorry about that, folks. So let's talk about HLG. So we want to focus on HLG because not just because the GH5 has it, but I think it's going to end up being the standard. And I say that from, it's going to come down to this. I remember back in the day when there were two different format wars that broke out. The first being VHS versus Beta. Beta Cam trumps VHS. It is a way better signal. It looks better. It retains everything better. It's a better product. But VHS was cheaper and more uh, accessible to the masses. So guess what won? VHS. So beta at the time, the old tapes, would become the broadcast standard that we'd all work off of and VHS would be the, the delivery standard in which the majority saw. The same thing happened with Blu-ray versus HD DVD, both comparable in image quality, but Blu-ray ended up winning at the end of the day. So Blu-ray becomes the primary focus of that. Just consider the war is gonna break out, just be prepared for either way. The great part about this is, with something like the GH5, and this is not a shameless plug, this is the truth, you have log, if you've bought log, you have HLG for free for the, from the upgrade, you're equipped to handle any situation. And if you don't think that's awesome, I don't know what is. Because truly, you can, you can fight the war on both sides. You can be a mercenary. You can live in both places at the same time and just rock and roll it. So that's a cool feature of that. Long video, we wanted to give you as much detail as we could. There will be more tutorials coming on HDR, HLG workflow process, where we get even more into detail. So don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hang out with us, let us know what you think. Shoot some stuff in the comments. We like to chat there too. All right.